I'd like to. So, welcome those of you who chose to come. We have a good <laughs> class today. Um, so today we're doing numerical simulations. We're studying macro evolution. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay. So here is Richard Dawkins, back when he was young, and showing his little program for um, evolving morphologies. And so this is something where he has a central parent that has multiple offspring. You can choose which offspring you want to survive. Repeat, repeat. So it's sort of like um, you know artificial selection, basically it's showing out of how artificial selection can work. And of course, natural selection I think works in similar ways, where you know this one has more offspring, leads the next generation, and so forth. All right. So this is done for teaching, really. Okay. But we actually use simulation to actually understand science a lot. Right. So here's an early example of that. <coughs> um, by very young, and other people Alright, so what they're doing here is trying to understand uh, <coughs> uh, background extinction and how, how we expect trees to grow. Okay? So normally we, did, we looked at diversity, and I, I simulated many trees you know, using the same parameters, and got, you got very different results out. Right? So that was, that was an example of using simulation to help inform your understanding. So like, even though you have the same model, you can create very, very different outcomes. So you're doing simulation here <coughs> to um, simulate evolution of trees and like number of taxa and see how well it compares to the fossil record. Why would you do that? So why why simulate a bunch of null distributions for you know what the fossil record should look like compared to the actual fossil record? It's different, you know, it's due to some Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so <coughs> you want to see something's weird or if it's something you know, it's what you expect, right? And so what she said more precisely. Right. So by doing this simulation, you can see here I have this cloud of trees, and I have this one weird thing that shows, you know, say rapid turnover at the end of the Cretaceous period that I don't see normally. So whatever sort of background process I have normally, it changed at that point. Okay. And so simulation is a way of testing that. Right. Um, <coughs> so here's an example. And I'll let you so again since the schools involved, lots of text, lots of big words. Probably baseball somewhere there in the paper. Let you read this quick abstract. And this, and this part might be clearer.
All right, so we're going to just talk about it and see you know, what this means, and we'll talk about it as a, as a group. All right. So, what do people think? What are, what are they saying in this? Good, except that it's not seen off as four people. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, but w w w when you're one of like the middle people in paper, you get really annoyed. Just like, oh, Bob, I was there too. <laughs> All four of them. But, yeah, but you're right. Good. Okay, what else? Do people agree. <laughs> That's a good way to study evolution. Sort of the general, that one particular instance has many factors, but the general case, yeah. It's like, why did Grandpa Joe get cancer? Well, he used to smoke and he used to work outside with the sun, and is that asbestos thing, right? And so you might not be able to figure out exactly why Grandpa Joe got cancer, but you can figure out that smoking leads to cancer in general, and asbestos inhalation leads to cancer in general, without being able to know that, you know, which thing got him, right? So that's the difference between the, the specific, specific cases, right? The the uh, ideographic approach and the nomothetic of saying you know, smoking causes cancer. So, which would you do? Or
Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? These are things that people always read and never speak, so. Oh, 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 it's like too much nuance there. So. <coughs> oh, that's good, that's good. What do you think? I What do you plan to work on? I will think. Okay. Um, maybe we're, we're thinking about concrete examples. So, what, what's, a, what's a macro evolutionary question we can look at from you know, small individual cases or large cases? <clears throat> How about mass extinction? Extinctions. Right. So, what would be the nomothetic way to study ex mass extinctions? Mm -hmm. Let's look at an overall mass extinction process um, across many taxa. Right? What would be an ideographic way? So you know, the dinosaurs go ex the non avian dinosaurs go extinct due to, you know, not enough sunlight, not enough plants, so they go extinct from toxic gases or something like that. Okay. Right, and so these are different, you know, as Kay said, these are different ways of doing science. And even they say one's not it's not that one's right, one's wrong, it's different approaches. They're saying seeing in paleontology people are doing more of just one approach, focusing on their particular group and saying, Okay, why did this group go extinct? They want to take a step back and have but look, look at the overall pattern. Okay. Um, so they had this basic simulation. They have a tree where it's going through time. Right? And then kind of all of these spindle diagrams, right? which is if you take a tree and sort of think like wrapping a membrane around the tree, you can case it, and then you buy a Christmas tree and it's wrapped in this plastic bag. It's like that. Right? And so you don't see all the individual branches. We do see how wide the tree is at every point. <coughs> and so they do various simulations. And so here you can see the state of computer graphics in 1973. 
Um, <coughs> and they can also look at things like diversity through time. So if you have a you know, density thing, you can go out and fluctuate. Okay. And then you can see <coughs> um, you know, if this thing you simulate look like empirical case sets. So here are the simulations, and here's the first data set. And so, so okay, so in the in the three ways that I see in this cutoff quite the many of them, whereas in my simulations I don't see such a cutoff. Okay. So I suggest that something weird is happening here. There's a weird thing as rocks from outer space. <coughs> right? But this is a way of telling so but, but then you might not focus on, oh, why did this group go extinct? No, this is a normal model. This just expands and contracts randomly. Right? And it happens to look like that. So it might be that interesting to know why that one might expand to the normal All right. Um, <coughs> sort of flagging on this. Let me go through this quickly. So, you also simulate um, small evolutionary, small scale stuff. So, here they actually have um, organisms. So each program is an organism, and they can evolve, and they have them compete against each other. And so here's a, you know, how it how it <coughs> changes through time. And so you can evolve, and you can see what behaviors organisms get. Do they get, become small and quickly evolving? Do they become parasites of other organisms and sort of replicate it in the lab? And so you can say, oh wow, in this in the simulated life, we also evolve parasitism, and parasitism will evolve in generally. Rather than parasitism being this sort of peculiar thing that you know if you could replay the type of life you wouldn't get anymore. Okay, we're going to leave time for today. This is a sort of background of how we can use some simulations. But I was actually to build one in class today. Okay, um, <coughs> so talk to each other about what sort of question we could ask with this approach, and then we'll, we'll actually in class build it. So you know about, know a lot about macroevolution at this point, presumably, so what questions can you ask?